So this is the lithium ion phosphate battery, LFP battery, or they call it LIFE, L-I-F-E-P-O-4. This battery, this chart here, voltage chart, as per the state of charge, SOC. From here, we mentioned that from 20% to 80% range. This is the range it's recommend to use. It has a lot of capacity in this range. We don't want this battery to operate below 20% mark unless it is very necessary. So we say no node should be allowed to draw more power when the battery voltage for below that range. By the way, uh, one cell is this column here. That's one cell. And four cell, it will be 12 volt system. And this eight cell, it's going to be 24 volt system. 16 cells connecting series will be 48 system. Uh, we take a 24 system as an example, but it's 48 just time two. 12 volt system, so divide by 2. So we say in this range, normally we would use that as a cutting voltage for off grid system. Off grid system, we want the load to kick in, to draw the power from the system, to prevent that voltage keep on rising, say when the sun comes out and the charge controller start pump, pumping power into the lithium phosphate, iron phosphate battery, the voltage will rise from both sources, from the MPPT solid charge controller and from the solid charge maximizing controller. Uh, when the current comes in, the voltage will rise, but we don't want them to rise above 80%. So we should have the system kick in to draw the power from the battery or draw the power directly from the solar array. Uh, this battery there will just maintain the voltage. So that DC can go to the off-grid, this inverter, or this uh, PEM cell or AEM cells to produce green hydrogen. But if you have a grid high system, uh, say that power draw is like a still not controlling the voltage because you got so much capacity from the solar array and you don't want them a power to the voltage to rise keep on rising over the 90% mark. So here we'll have to sometimes if you have a grid tie system, but you need a grid tie approval, you want to set that voltage, say 20, 27 or 28, 26.8 or 27 volts to have the grid tie system kicks in because the grid tie system, regardless if you use it, the power locally a lot, you can always consume the power and then reject it back into the grid. But you need a grid tie approval to be able to do the other ways. You would have to size the battery bank capacity big enough to consume the, uh, to store the power or off grid. The like power draw during the day uh, is sufficient to maintain the voltage. So this is the. Uh, voltage reference like uh, you need to know uh, to set up a, a system property to control the voltage. But this is uh, many types of the we verified, but you still, if you have a lithium ion phosphate battery, you still need to take a look to confirm with the manufacturer's manual book to double check to confirm that is the voltage and they have, uh, that's the range. Another thing I would like to mention is that see this 29.2 and 58.4, this 14.4, that 100% charge, this mark, is normally is the voltage. 
BMS system setup for to shut down everything to protect the LFP battery. So if you have a uh, lithium ion phosphate battery, if you try to run the voltage above 29, the chance are this battery management system would shut it down and to pr protect the system. So you, you have the system voltage keep on rising above that mark but the battery is not good, uh, it's protected, it's isolated. And once that happens, the system voltage will keep on shooting up. And there's another protection in uh, um, both MPPT solar charge controller and the solar charge maximizing controller because they will sense the high voltage too and it will cut, shut down everything. So the solar array will have no, no more power coming into the system. So that's how this system will work. So this is the voltage control diagram for a very simple hybrid system. We call them a hybrid system because you have a hydrometer here. It could be 50 hertz, 22 volt system, or this um, 240 split phase system. However, here, we only actually use it for 120 volts in the 60 hertz system. But in case 220 volt system, it'll be 50 hertz. And it's the same and then including the automatic transfer switch it's also the same we are going to give you the link uh, to what type of the uh, automatic transfer switch we recommend the one that responds to the voltage setting you can set actually all different valves like from 20 to 30 and at what voltage at what DC voltage the tra transfer switch will cut in and then cut out so in this system we want this transfer switch to cut in at certain voltage so this is the voltage we want the transfer switch to cut in is at 26 26.5 somewhere 26.5 at that voltage we say the lithium iron phosphate battery being charged to 80 percent and you don't want them to charge no more than that because the voltage rise high is not preferred and uh, you want the the transfer switch to cut in to spend the capacity the load energy stored in the battery system or another term is you spend energy to prevent the lithium iron phosphate battery getting further charge so the temp the, the voltage will rise and you said 26.5 or 0.8 to cut in and as the load draw more current from the DC circuit the inverter going to consume more from the battery or solar array and the voltage drop down to 25.6 that's 20 percent the mark and you don't want the voltage to drop no more than that so you want this to cut out the automatic transfer switch to cut out at that voltage so after that uh, if you still have the power from the solar array it will actually be used to charge the battery instead of to power the DC load. This is how we control the voltage range. So this basically this battery will work like a reservoir to maintain the voltage, uh, prevent it from getting too lower or getting too higher. And this MPPT solar charge controller still remain as it is. The setting, whatever uh, the manufacturer recommends to be set at, is still set at certain 
uh, uh, for certain type of the battery, lithium ion phosphate or it's a uh, lead acid, whatever uh, it is recommend. But it, MPPT solar charge controller you include in the system should be designed for lithium ion phosphate battery for sure, because uh, you will be uh, rely on this uh, LFP battery to work in the solar charge maximizing controller system. So MPPT solar charge controller must be compatible with this one, uh, with, with the battery you have. So solar charge maximizing controller here, you have the voltage setting too. And we want you to set that voltage to charge the, or to provide the DC power uh, directly to the load or charge the battery at 25.6 volt if the solar array, this PS voltage here, PS voltage is rising above 25.6 volt. You want this contact to be on so the current can go directly into the system to be spanned by the inverter or to charge by uh, charge or charge it to the LFP battery. Um, if that voltage could not be consumed, could not be spanned, and the system voltage will keep on rising, say you did not have that much AC load, you do not have a lot of capacity of the battery, the DC voltage will rise. And then when it's rise above 27.2, you want to cut out. You want this solar charge maximizing controller to disconnect. The, this need to disconnect from the system to prevent this high current going through the system because we say high current going through will cause this to rise further to 90% mark to 100% mark and then we'll have this battery management system kicks in to shut down this battery to protect the battery. We don't want that to happen. So we want the solar charge maximizing controller to disconnect above 27.2 mark. However, even this is disconnected, we say that current from the system is still available from MPPT solar charge controller. So MPPT solar charge controller could still work. So lots of time this scenario will happen, you size a system uh, the AC load is not that much during the day. It was most of the uh, time it will happen because you spend more load even in time. So daytime, you may not have that much AC load. So uh, this lithium ion phosphate battery capacity, if it's not sized sufficient, it may not be have that much current draw. Uh, you want this to disconnect from the system and then the, the rest panel still have the power go through MPPT solar charge controller to power the load, to charge the battery directly. Um, yes, it is kind of the waste of the energy only when you don't have large this battery bank there, say for a house operation, if the battery is only like a uh, five kilowatt hour, uh, less than 10 kilowatt hour, it may happen and then you don't have enough AC load. It could happen. But if you have a sufficient, this capacity of the battery, less likely it's, it's going to happen. Another thing is that you have to, based on the reality to design that solar array. You don't want to have too much solar array. If you don't have lots of this AC load during the day, you don't have large capacity of the battery. And because it's an off-grid system, you cannot reject the power back into the grid. So you cannot have a huge this solar array system. For the speed bolt wire, we're going to explain them in detail how to form that. Basically, this split PS, split 
wire you don't uh, uh, you cannot use MC4 connector alone because it does not have enough this current capacity that's why most of the time this speed wire you need to have the speed bolt connection we are going to talk about that in a minute but uh, this is the very basic voltage setup uh, uh, to, to, to make sure the system will work uh, uh, as CSMC solar charge maximizing controller system to work to uh, function properly uh, without uh, uh, short cycle in this charge controller as you can see this inverter here has a wide voltage operating range uh, it, you can just leave it as it is or when the inverter asks you to set it you can set them at this uh, at 22 a high at 29 normally their protection high voltage is 30 a low protection could be 20 but you can uh, adjust a wider range than the system operating voltage like uh, between 20% and 80% SOC so this inverter will become just like a standby so standby there whenever you want to spend the power it's going to be always available for for, for the AC load so that transfer switch will work in maximum 35 milliseconds to power the appliances so this is how the DC voltage can be maintained within the range which is uh, preferred to have the system function properly but still rely on the capacity sizing for the AC load spent during the day and the battery bank capacity uh, the whole system design has to be sized properly again this is uh, exactly our uh, same the one we just explained the one we just talked about um, uh, for this portion for the, this portion without uh, the DC power direct consumption the rest is the same as the one we just explained it could be 120 system for the uh, 60 Hertz system it could be 220 volt system for the 50 Hertz system it just uh, you have a single phase this solid uh, uh, automatic transfer switch and single phase solar off grid inverter. Um, of course, that power has to match the AC load we have here. Uh, so, this is a DC to AC inverter, and uh, we say you gotta size the properly. If the solar array has got too much um, capacity there, and uh, you don't have enough AC load but a solar array is big and uh, you don't want to spend too much money on buying this battery to store them to be used at the light this is the option you can have just try to increase the DC load uh, and we'll try to increase DC load it's, it's good something like that if it's a cabin operation you can have a DC this fridge you can have lots of DC load actually in the uh, a trailer application uh, but sometimes you don't have no more this DC load right no more DC load available and then if you are thinking about the off-grid and this is another uh, possibility here you can put the hydrogen this production here because this system very easily going to give you 144 amps that's normally this PAM cell is asking for uh, at 24 volts sometimes 12 volts but at 24 volts you can have the uh, proton this exchange membranes this design they actually asking for 144 amps and 24 volt 44 amps is very easy to get this get from this 5.0 kilowatt system solar array say you don't have that much capacity of AC load during the day and uh, you don't have that much capacity of this LFP battery because it's quite expensive and then you can have actually this we call them a green hydrogen generator they can be set at 27 volts so if this automatic transfer switch kicks in 
and then still control the voltage at 26.6 maximum, but still could not have the voltage under control. It still rises because you just got too much power from the solar charge maximizing controller system. And then you don't want the voltage to go up above 27.2, that is 80% mark. What you can do, you put the, this large, this capacity of the green hydrogen production, production here to kick in to span the DC power to make the green hydrogen directly. And then green hydrogen can be stored in a metal hydrate, this cylinder. And that metal hydrate cylinder can be break down to certain stages, like a first or second stage, and then the, the pressure can keep on pumping up, keep on rise until uh, reaching like a 30 bars. And like a, like a, you could have that because a metal hydrate cylinder, it, it has a metal alloy inside the cylinder. It can, can have a, quite a lot of uh, the hydrogen stored inside. And then you can design a system to have a cylinder temperature under control, say 25, degree, the pressure is that much, it matches the PEM cells, this operating pressure, uh, it's not much, but uh, you cut down the hydrogen supply from the PEM cell, one nine, and then raise the cylinder temperature up to say 100 Celsius degree, the pressure can be boosted up to like a 30 bars. So, so it's quite a flexible system that you can put a lot of this green hydrogen in the system and that green hydrogen can be spent uh, user for, for to, to, to solve it or to power uh, fuel cell this appliances or in the future you could uh, have a, a, a fuel cell vehicle, you know, even. So this is another significant energy uh, potential source used uh, in uh, green as a green hydrogen format, uh, this is, could be very good energy renewable energy source for the future. But even now, this green green hydrogen still uh, can be used, uh, can be re used for heating, can be reject injected into the uh, um, natural line system in certain percentage to power the uh, furnace. So so. This is uh, just another potential is there that allows you to run the system without huge capacity of the lithium ion phosphor battery. And then you can pump a lot of energy to store the energy in green hydrogen format. And this is a very good potential for um, hybrid or off-grid living with the solar charge maximizing controller because you use that benefit to the maximum because you know the solar charge maximizing controller can give you lots of DC current. Very easily you get uh, over 200 amps to produce the green hydrogen at 24 volts. So that's quite a lot. This is another type of the uh, hybrid system, but no grid high approval, just regular meter. And that regular meter over there is actually 575 or 600 volts three phase 60 hertz system. Very popular for the commercial building. You have 575 or 600 volts coming to the building, and then you have a transformer there. Step down the voltage. This transformer is called a delta Y connection. Uh, it's delta in the primary. This side and then secondary side, you got 120, 208 is white connection. Uh, you got neutral at that point and then provide load with uh, 120, it probably provide the load to appliances in commercial building like a fridges, lighting equipment, 120 volts load, very popular. And then you can also get 208 from there, uh, a, a, a single phase 208, but three phase also you get 208, white connection power uh, rooftop unit even. So this is quite a common power supply. Without that, that the other portion like uh, this side, without this side, 
that's just a normal, uh, this side is just, just like a normal, this uh, three phase supply, 120 toy system for a commercial building, is very popular. You got the uh, three phase power supply. And this is a transfer switch here. Uh, we're going to post the link uh, in the uh, uh, some of the uh, content in the uh, another uh, reference material there in the course. But this transfer switch is actually a contact switch can be set for the DC voltage. It will sense the DC voltage in the battery bank and you can set 26.5, 25.6. Uh, to cut out 26.5 to cut in so you get the uh, 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 Methods same to maintain the DC voltage of the battery bank which is here uh, In the battery management system in the whole system. This is a typical system we use for commercial building with about 20 kilowatts capacity of the solar array and then you rely on six of the uh, inverter and that inverter type of inverter we have is a grow wire system and 120 each one of them you can have six of them work together like a two work in one phase and another two in the second phase another two works for the third phase and all joined together through the uh, communication cable that communication cable will be able to tell that each every inverter to work in the phase offset at 120 degree so you get the uh, 120 and the 208 this three phase power supply and then power supply to the ac load that ac load can power a three phase motor um or rooftop unit equipment rooftop unit equipment just like a commercial building and because of the building, you may have like a, a f big area, flat the roof, uh, enough space to install 20 kilowatts this solar array up there, and then we can have each system take care of the five kilowatts, and each solar charge maximizing controller take off, take care of the five kilowatts. So join four of them, and join them up, become a 20 kilowatt system, and then work with the six of the. Uh, uh, single phase inverters, but uh, you have the communication cable joined up together to produce three phase power supply 208, 120, 208, three phase in white connection. This power supply to a lot of rooftop equipment. But remember that any motor equipment, any rooftop unit equipment, this motor uh, is compressor inside, you have to make sure. Uh, the system has a sufficient building uh, delay uh, just to protect the compressor because you can't have the compressor like a start and stop start right away and the pressure build up at the condenser side can overload uh, the compressor so you don't want to have that happen but lots of equipment actually have its own delay build inside but for some model uh, you cannot have the power supply from the grid and all of a sudden you get a power supply from the off-grid system uh, because uh, uh, the phase is like a offset it's not going to be matching directly so you need to have that contact type of this transfer switch that switch uh, some manufacturer has that designed into the system they sense the phase of the original this uh, power from the grid and then they build in it's called in phase transition during the transition the machine automatically sends the phase and they try to match up the phase from the off-grid system and make sure not to overload uh, to cause the motor operation uh, malfunction so, so so that motor will turn smoothly and you need to have the in phase or delay the transaction uh, transition. Delay the transition can prevent that from happening as well. O motor overload can prevent the motor overload from happening as well. So make sure you have that feature included, but that's too much for our course. 
but just let you know that this type of the system you can still have the battery voltage the battery voltage is actually the uh, battery signal line get connected to the transfer switch uh, 24 system so that controller sends the 24 volts and then you can set that 26.5 to kick in the transfer switch at 25.6 to disconnect the, uh, the load so make sure it's not overcharged or discharged over discharged of the battery bank of that system you can still maintain that system voltage at 20% to 80% of the capacity so this is a, a off-grid system but it's three phase this is a typical grid tie system it's like a 220 volt single phase 50 hertz system because that's 220 volts power supply from the grid and that system actually helps for for you to reduce the capacity of the battery bank because uh, uh, you may not want to uh, build the hydrogen production it's quite expensive and then you may not want to spend so much on the lithium iron phosphate battery uh, but you have the area uh, enough to put the 5 or 10 kilowatts this is our array for your property um, you don't want to spend too much on the lithium iron phosphate battery and during the day you can have a lot of power from a solar array and you only have so much uh, AC load during the day uh, you want to fully utilize the system uh, general capacity generated uh, but you do need a net meter here instead of uh, putting automatic transfer switch in this system you actually have a contactor and that contactor can be any contactor you install them in an electrical box with a coil so this is the coil here say whatever the system voltage is 110 or 220 match that voltage that coil that 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 coil is actually energized by the system voltage here so whenever the system has a power supply coming from the grid uh, this normal open contact switch will become closed will become closed and then it just power the load directly through the contactors it's a mechanical contact power load directly and whenever the grid power is off for whatever the reason is uh, this contact will fall back to normal connected position and normal connected position here has a standby off-grid checking sign with inverter so this off-grid checking sign with inverter will mimic the grid power whatever the grid power is it just make a similar power to actually trigger that off-grid uh, grid type to trigger that grid tie inverter to work so whenever the grid is off uh, you still have the power available from the solar array it's different from a uh, uh, 100% grid tie system we call this a grid tie hybrid it's different from 100% grid tie system when the grid power is off the solar power cannot be used that system is very popular these days like everywhere you have grid tie system but uh, during power outage nobody has power because the grid tie system doesn't work but this system will give you that uh, potential to work to provide the ac load say, say some kind of emergency every load ac load uh, still can be powered by the solar array with this system uh, during normal uh, times when the grid power is available you still can export power to the grid uh, through the uh, contactor here so this is uh, how it works but the only thing is like uh, you need to have a trigger tricking inverter off-grid inverter tricking inverter and the battery bank to for the system to work 
uh, of course, you still have the MPPD solid charge controller. You still have the solid charge maximizing controller. And then we're going to get into the detail for the next, uh, like a, after lectures, another section uh, to explain what is common negative, a common positive system for this off grid triggering inverter. You can actually set it to operate in the wider range, like a 22 to 29 volts, because it works like a standby. During the time when the grid power is available, this is actually disconnected. So it's working like a standby power. When the grid is off or power outage is somewhere down there, and then this one will be always kicks in to mimic the grid power and to make sure to trick this off grid uh, grid time inverter to work. And this grid time inverter, you still set at 20% to 20, 20% uh, to 80% mark, like a cutout at 26.5 volt, cutting at 25.5 or 0.6, and to maintain the system voltage. And this system, once you size it properly, and it can always be maintained because uh, um, you size the system properly so this inverter will spend whatever the energy you have from this system. Say you can have maximum 200 amps coming into the system and then you size the inverter for maximum 200 amps AC, uh, DC power and then the energy can always be rejected into the net meter system. Uh, of course, the utility company would have to accept that kilowatts, uh, that accept the capacity you have, because sometimes the grid may only allow you to reject so much, so, but that still has a limit. But anyway, you know that this can be controlled once you size the system properly, and then can always be, be maintained at that voltage range, proper voltage range, without putting too much battery capacity, battery bank, without putting other DC load into it or PEM, this green hydrogen production, uh, for, uh, this equipment into it, and then the voltage can still be controlled.